Good day everyone and welcome to this PvP guide about easy one bar builds. There has been an influx of new PvP players who want something easy to start with and that may be used to one bar builds in PvE. For these players I want to provide something here that is accessible and still performs well in a competitive environment. My hopes for this guide and these builds is that they may tempt some of you to try out PvP more and have fun in there, and that they serve as a stepping stone to other, more complicated builds. If you like this video and want to see more like this, you can always let me know by subscribing or visiting my Patreon page in the description. You can find all the build information from this video on my website as well, esopvpbuilds.com. So first I have to set the ground rules that I used in this experiment for making good and accessible PvP builds. Obviously, they have to be easy in terms of gameplay. Playing it must be intuitive and easy to pick up on. But they also have to be easy to acquire, so I'll avoid tedious grinds such as weapons or dungeon sets or trial sets. Any builds I present also need to be effective, and that's where things might get tricky, since Ogunsol luckily got some big nerfs in PvP. But this doesn't mean that one of our builds cannot be viable and carry you a long way without practicing much. That's all for the setting of this video. And now I'll go to what I found for every class for this goal. In order to keep the idea of general applicability, I'll present the sets I like the most first that I'll use in every class, as well as a basic skill layout. The currently available sets that I tried and found fitting for the criteria are Mara's Balm, Robes of the Hist, Ordesraf, Gretsch Vitality, Gourmand, and Night Mother's Case. I think that if you combine any two of these sets, you'll have a decent build. But for the most part, I've gone with the combination of Aldous Wrath and Gourmand. In other words, I chose for crit builds. That's because, for offense, dealing high crit damage creates the necessary burst that makes up for the loss of damage from extra skills or proc sets that you could use on a double bar build. Defensively, this is also valuable, since heals can crit as well, and this way you get significantly more healing. For the traits, for every build, I have gone with Reinforced on a heavy curse, and for the rest, well fitted. You could go impenetrable as well, or even sturdy on classes that block a lot, but I found that having roll dodge available and being able to do this a lot it helps a lot for survivability if you get into a tricky situation. More so than the 10% crit damage reduction from 5 impenetrable or the block cost reduction from sturdy would have. This counts for every class. For the jewelry, I've gone with Tree Infused, as that is the most stat dense jewelry enchantment and you can get a lot of damage or regeneration this way. For the enchantments, I've gone with Prismatic Enchantments on the big pieces, being the chest, the greaves and the head piece, but you could also go with Prismatic Enchants on all the pieces. The reason I've not done so on the small pieces is simply to keep this build accessible. So with that in mind, I don't want to put enchantments that give a marginally better stat sheet that cost 50k or more for each gear piece. The enchantment on the weapon is just a regular weapon damage enchantment, and when I use the two crit sets I mentioned before, I usually go with precise, simply to further go into that story of building for more crit chance and crit damage. That said, you cannot go wrong with sharpened, defending, or powered, or charged as well, though you have to watch out with charged as that means you would have to run an Inferno Staff with Crushing Shock to really get value out of it. On the jewelry, as I mentioned before, I'm pushing some more regeneration and weapon and spell damage this way. On most classes, I've gone with a double weapon and spell damage enchant, which gives stamina recovery or magic recovery, depending from build to build, and one regeneration enchant, usually for magic recovery, but this can be adjusted, so for example on some builds if you want to maximize damage and you're fine with your sustain if you just have your attack every now and then, you can go with 3 weapon and spell damage glyphs as well. For the armor weights, I've gone with mostly medium armor, 5 pieces of that, and then 1 light and 1 heavy. That's because medium armor is generally the best of the 3 armor types, giving the most amount of both damage and sustain and survivability this way. That's not to say that the other armor weights are bad, but especially for crit builds, I prefer going with as much medium armor as I can. The one light and one heavy piece I also have are simply there for the undaunted piece. That means that the Quiris will be heavy, 
the sash will be light of the gourmand set, everything else will be medium of the Order's Wrath set, and then two jewelry pieces and the weapon as well of the gourmand set, with one monster set piece, can be either on the shoulder or on the helmet, and there I usually go with either Magma Incarnate or Baron Tursk. These gave the same one piece bonuses, one drops from a dungeon and one drops from Imperial City, so it depends a bit from person to person what is easier to acquire. You generally want to aim for about 30k health and 1.6k unbuffed magic regeneration and a little bit lower or around that too in unbuffed stamina regeneration. Your weapon damage is usually going to be somewhere between 5k and 5.5k buffed. On classes that have minor sorcery or minor brutality, being Templar and Dragonite, it will be a bit higher. Your resistances will be rather low. You will also have minor resolve from having vigor on the skill bar, but still you are sitting around somewhere between 20 and 25k resistances. Good thing is though that if you find yourself to be too squishy with this, the easy way to increase that is simply switching out one of the five piece set to something like Mara's Balm or Robes of the Hist or Trial by Fire. For the skill layout, the base idea is to have one skill slot for a burst heal, one for vigor, one for a burst skill and one for a spam ball. The ultimate is whatever you like, but Dawnbreaker is always a good choice. That leaves out one skill slot as a flex spot, which can serve as extra damage or healing, a stun, mobility, or a combination of all of that depending from class to class. That's an easy and straightforward layout where you can try to make burst damage using your spammable and delayed burst skill, and you heal by keeping Vigor active and using the burst heal in tricky situations. For the auxiliary stuff, for the Mundus I have usually gone with the Shadow, in light of this crit build, it gives a lot of extra damage and a lot of extra healing this way. And you have a high amount of crit chance already using your bunt and all the scroff, so you get a lot of value out of this. That said, it's not the only option. As I mentioned before, you can go with the lady if you feel like you need to stack resistances more. But another good option is the H luck in case you feel like you need more sustain. On all builds, you have to be vampire level 3. It's mandatory for anything in PvP for the undeath passive. And for the food, I have usually gone with Ozorga Smoked Bear Haunch, that's Jewels of Misrule in case you want a cheaper version of that, for more sustain. You can also go with Bit Sugar Skull simply for pushing your magic and stamina higher, but I find having both at at least 16 to 17k is enough for this kind of PvP. Especially if you go well fitted as well, you don't need to worry about stamina sustain as much, and if you have high base sustain levels, the maximum magicka and maximum stamina doesn't matter as much as long as you're above this certain threshold of about 60 to 17k. For the potions on every build I've gone with tripods simply because these give a lot of sustain and the buffs are not something that open soul provides. And then lastly for the champion points, for the red tree I've always gone with sustain by suffering, pain's refuge, rejuvenation and survival instincts. You can switch rejuvenation to other things you like as well. Two good champion point active stars that come to mind are Celerity and Relentlessness. For the green tree I have Steed's Blessing, Gifted Rider, War Mount and Sustaining Shadows. For the blue tree this depends from class to class and I will go over it when I get to the different classes. So this is the base build, you can find this on the website as well. And now we'll go over what I do for every class, what kind of skills I have and what kind of champion points I use to finish this base build off. So I'm going to start with Sorcerer. On the Sorcerer, my base healing skill is Twilight Matriarch. My Vigor is always here. Cushion Weapon is a Spam Pool. Crystal Fragments is the Burst skill. And then the fifth utility skill is Streak. Streak is great for mobility and is a stun as well. So that's a really nice skill to have that allows you to dance around. It allows you to keep on pressuring from range with your damage skills. Cushion Weapon is also going to provide Major Breach. Major Breach is something that is not naturally in the build. You could use Night Model's Gaze for that. But on many classes, if I can use Crushing Weapon or another source of Major Breach, it's fun to be able to switch out the Night Model's Gaze to something that gives me more crit damage or more healing. Crushing Weapon can be a little bit tricky to use since it doesn't behave as much like classic spammables such as Crushing Shock, but I do find that it should be able for newer players to get used to the skill as well, especially since somewhere down the line, be it in PvP or PvE, you might end up losing it again regardless. Now, Twilight is a bit of a tricky burst heal as it can be killed. In itself, the tooltip is pretty decent. The drawback of it being double barred doesn't really count here since it's a one bar build. 
And if it gets killed, the good thing is that you still have Vigor and Streak to get away with and to safely recast it. So keep an eye on that. Especially if you are immovable, it's a really great time to recast the Twilight Matriarch. And if it is down, just play careful, try and get out of the fight and recast it again. As an ultimate, I have Power Overload. Power Overload it gives a little bit more damage than Energy Overload. Energy Overload gives a lot more sustain, so you have to choose a bit for yourself whether you want a little bit more damage or a lot more sustain. But this also is a great way of dealing extra burst as on Sorcerer, again from range. And all things combined, on this class you don't even need to come near your enemy to deal any damage except if you want to stun them with Streak. As this class is also fully ranged, I have gone with a bow as a weapon here. So I have the Gourmand's bow with the precise trait and weapon damage enchantment. It works nicely, you have some sort of a bow sword this way. You could also go with an Inferno Staff and Crushing Shock as a Pamble. But then I would also recommend switching out Gourmand's to Night Model's case. Thing is, I did found this to be working better simply for it giving more damage, more crit damage and still having major breach. And bow also has a passive that gives you yet another line of critical chance which works hand in hand with this entire crit team that i'm going for with these builds for the blue champion points i've gone with weapons expert focus mending deadly aim and master at arms thus increasing your damage with two of these passives increasing your healing with a third and then the last increasing the burst you deal with overload specifically a really nice active star for sorcerer Next up is Nightblade. Nightblade is actually one of the most fun classes I've had with this kind of one bar build. And the way I do it is by just making a basic, fully ranged, but effective sniper build. So the skills on this are Shadowy Disguise, Merciless Resolve, Focused Aim, Healthy Offering, Resolving Vigor, and Ballista. And the way it works is simply you have the same burst heal with healthy offering and resolving vigor if you get attacked. You have cloak to get away with easily, but also to gank people from stealth. And then your spam ball is focused aim, your burst is merciless resolve. For the blue champion points, I have deadly aim, fighting finesse, master at arms, and focused mending. The gameplay of this build, as I mentioned, vigor and healthy offering are your heals. Shadowy disguise is for getting away and for ganking. And basically, you sit at the furthest range possible, and you simply spam focused aim. It's ridiculously simple, but also ridiculously effective. You have to weave that with light attacks, and then eventually you'll also have a proc of merciless resolve. When you get that, you simply cast that right after a focused aim, and that way these two skills, these two arrows basically, will hit right at the same time, creating a very high amount of burst for a very easy effort. You can do that from stealth too if you want. The ultimate ballista is simply for when you have a tanky target or when somebody is pressuring you. It's an easy way to just have a huge amount of pressure dealt on them. I prefer this morph over Toxic Barrage, which is the other morph that deals poison damage and a bit more damage as well. But it does lock you in place as well. And I see a lot of players, especially beginning players, casting this ult and then dying because they are simply out in the open and they're not able to defend themselves from any incoming attacks. And I myself too, when I play classes and I see somebody casting a Toxic Barrage at me, I find it an excellent opportunity to try and burst them down because often they don't know how to cancel it, when to cancel it, or what to do to properly set that ultimate up. So that's why I've gone with Ballista here. Next up for Templar, I've still kept the same theme with the bow and the ranged build. Even though you can also run this class in the melee version, I find it more effective like this. The skills here are Radiant Depression, Binding Javelin, Crushing Weapon, All of the Dead, Resolving Vigor, and Meteor. And for the blue CPs, I have Fighting Finesse, Focused Mending, Deadly Aim, and Master at Arms, greatly increasing the damage. As for the playstyles and the combos in this class, I use Cushion Weapon as my spam ball, as always, Binding Javelin as my stun uh, when an enemy gets about 50% health, and then I follow it up with a Radiant Impression. Radiant Impression is a really strong finisher, it's the strongest in the game, and it's also ranged, and it's one of the big reasons that I like to play this class from range, because it's such an extremely powerful skill to use. One of the Dead and Resolving Vigor, as always, will serve as your burst heal and your heal over time. And the ultimate Meteor simply serves to greatly increase the ranged burst you can already deal, because if you combine this with the Binding Javelin, people cannot roll dodge or block the burst, because Meteor goes through roll dodge and Binding Javelin goes through block. Then for Warden as well, I've been able to get an easy ranged build to play with. This class is most often played in melee, but I find for this, again, it is easier to play in ranged, especially when it comes to the amount of skill slots you need on the Warden. 
So for the skills, I have Living Trellis, Crushing Shock, Arctic Blast, Deep Fissure, and Resolving Vigor, and for the ultimate Northern Storm. And for the blue champion points, I have Mastered Arms, Biting Aura, Fighting Finesse, and Focused Mending. Now, Warden is a bit special because here you already have a source of Major Breach, being Deep Fissure, and thus I was able to switch out the bow that I usually use as a ranged weapon to a Destruction Staff here, an Eye Staff more specifically. But the thing is, on a Warden, that's a really good change to make as well, because not only is the Eye Staff going to be really nice for defense, as in for every class, it also is going to give you a Minor Brittle. And Warden has a lot of frost damage you can use to proc that Minor Brittle. Here specifically, I do it with Arctic Blast and Crushing Shock, which also deals a bit of frost damage. And then with Minor Brittle, you're going to deal another 10% critical damage to the enemy. That works hand in hand with the crit build that this already is, and thus Warden turns out very nice for a one board build as well. For the rest of the skills, Living Trellis is something that I normally wouldn't want to use on a one bar build, since I already have a Burst Heal, Arctic Blast, and a Heal over time Resolving Vigor. But I am forced to use it here, because Warden has a lot of passives that are really nice that are attached to using a green balance skill for healing. Firstly, there is the major mending you can get when you get onto low health, and secondly, there's also an important sustain passive that Warden has through this. At the same time, I would also like to keep Vigor, simply because of how strong of a heal over time it is, and it also gives you minor resolve. But I think on this build, Vigor becomes sort of the flex spot, where if you want to, you can switch it out for a mobility skill, such as Bird of Prey or Race Against Time. The ultimate, Northern Storm, is a great use when enemies stack up on you and you want to do a huge amount of AoE burst together with Deep Fissure and Arctic Blast for a stun. And that way it also works quite nicely when you play tight with your group on the board. Next up for the Dragonites, firstly I have to mention that I did a change in the weapon here. Where usually I go with ranged weapons, I don't really feel like this is possible on a Dragonite. So here instead I've gone with a melee build. And for that I switched out the Gurman's bow, both in terms of sets and weapon. Instead of a bow here, I use dual wield axis. This is going to give me extra critical damage and works nicely with the crit build in general. As for the set, I've switched out the Gourmand set to Robes of the Hist here. I think Gourmand is also viable here and I've tried it as well. But I find that maybe especially for beginning players, if you're fighting in melee, you will take a lot more pressure as well since you're in the middle of combat. And it's nice to have an additional heal on top of that. So Robes of the Hist, which is also a set you can just buy and drops in Overland, is a good alternative here. For this patch right now, Scribes of Fate, you can also use Mara's Bomb, but that is getting a bit of a nerf next patch, so I am going to mention Robes of the Hist here as a main alternative for melee classes, or again, you can just keep the Gourmand set and go full damage and crit healing using that. Anyway, for the skills on a Dragonite, so in combination with the melee setup I have here, I have Noxious Breath, which is going to give Major Breach a nice bit of initial burst and a dot. This is also something I use a lot when I'm low on Magicka and I want to use a Spam Ball that costs Stamina instead. My next skill is the one that I usually have as a Spam Ball, Molten Whip. It does cost Magicka and Stamina though, so sometimes I will weave in Molten Whips with Noxious Breath. Molten Whip also has a side passive to it, where it gives extra weapon damage and spell damage, and also increases the damage of the next Molten Whip when using other Ardent Flame ability, being Noxious Breath. So I will use these skills mixed to each other quite a lot. The next one is Fossilize. Usually on Dragonite you go with the other morph that only gives a stun and then heals you, but here I've chosen to go with Fossilize because this not only stuns but also roots. And it's a really nice thing to have, especially when you're in low to mid PvP, because it's one of the toughest stuns in the game. And then for the ultimate, I've gone with Corrosive. This, I think, is the best ultimate for a Dragonite to use. It is more expensive, but when you do it, you can really easily turn around the fight and even start 1vxing, even when you don't have that much skill yet, because it makes you basically invulnerable, and it greatly increases your damage as well, to the point where you'll be hitting really hard, hitting crit whips, as well as just your other damage with Noxious Breath, simply from turning around with this ultimate and starting to unleash that on them. That said, it's not the most fun ultimate for Dragonite in my opinion, so I do have to mention Ferocious Leap as an alternative as well, which is an ultimate you can use more often, which also deals a nice amount of damage, so you definitely can't go wrong with it, but it simply is also a little less effective than using Corrosive. And then lastly, there is Necromancer. 
So for starts, I have to say that Necromancer is one of the classes in which I found this kind of one bar build idea to work the least effective on. I don't think it's necessarily therefore the weakest class in the game, but generally speaking it is not that strong, so I guess it makes sense. Anyway, so I've gone in the end with the same setup I've got done for the other classes, with Gourmand and Orders Wrath, with a bow and precise trait of Gourmand. And I am also using this arranged build on this, simply because of how easy it is. And because I think this class can still work from range just fine as well, so there's no need to necessarily swap to dual wield and a melee build. The skills are Agni Totem, Stalking Blast Bones, Crushing Weapon, Resistance Flash, Resolving Vigor, and Dawnbreaker. The flex spot here is Agony Totem. I use that because it's a really nice bit of defense you can have to keep people off of you, but you can slot all the skills you want if you want to as well. Blast Bones is your burst skill and will go nicely in combination with Crushing Weapon this way. And if you want to deal a huge amount of AoE burst damage, then you can top that off with Dawnbreaker or Smiting to get a nice bit of burst that looks really nice as well. And then for your spammable heal, you have Resistance Flesh, which is a really good spammable heal. So defensive-wise, this sits quite nicely. But still, in general, I do find this class struggles a little bit. That said, it's still very much viable, so I'm keeping the same build for this too. For the blue tree, I've gone with Focused Mending, Biting Aura, Mastered Arms, and Fighting Finesse. This is basically going to give you extra healing, of course, but Master and Arms and Viking Aura specifically will also give you a lot of AoE extra burst damage. So the main thing that you do with Blast Bones and Dawnbreaker is going to get significant burst from that. And then that's it for the classes, but there's also the Arcanist that is coming out soon in June. For that too, I will have a one bar build that will probably be the same idea, but with different skills available it will be on the website then though not in this video so if you're interested in that class and an easy pvp build there i have to reference you to the website so that's the overview of the builds that i found to be the most effective while still matching the criteria set at the start of this video but what if you are not a beginner player and you still want to use a one bar build which means you don't need that easy accessibility criteria in the sense that you should use sets that are easy to get Perfected Relican and Twice Fanged Snake are two trial sets that I would have liked to add in these builds as well, as they make a good fit for extra pressure on a one bar build. And its main drawback, not being able to be one bar on a double bar build, is not relevant for this type of setup. So if you're looking for better damage sets and you have those, they're worth a try as well. Sets like these are often not something that beginners want to get though, so they are out of the scope of this video. Now that leaves the questions, how good are these builds exactly overall in PvP? How good can they get? Where exactly do all console builds rank in terms of the competitive PvP environment? In PvE, one bar builds like the Heavy Attack Sorcerers are performing extremely well, to the point where you can clear basically any endgame content with them. They can carry players all the way from the start of the game and the first dungeons to trial hard modes. Personally, I think this is not ideal, because ESO's combat system is greatly simplified with these builds, and if players stick to the simplified version, they never experience the depth that ESO's combat provides. This way, it ignores the entire process of getting good at a game. Allowing players to get anything with very little effort may be nice for starting out, but as time progresses, it inevitably becomes extremely boring. In the meantime, there's no real incentive to try and switch off easy beginner builds as they are already almost as good as it can get in terms of DPS. So the combat system is only explored on a very shallow level, and the resulting boredom could eventually negatively impact the overall game experience. But that was about PvE. In PvP, things are different. You can still have the training wheels from Ocasol builds, which is great, and it's a good idea to have this accessibility option to give beginners an easy way to start PvP and get decently far into it. But unlike in PvE, one bar builds rarely remain competitive at the end game level, and at that point you're generally better off going with the double bar build. One bar builds are a strong and easy option for beginners, and only in some cases it's possible to get to a higher end game level if you update the sets with what I mentioned before. This is, to my knowledge, a way healthier system of accessibility builds, where they can help newer players, but later on they are incentivized to change things around to try and find better options in more end game competitive content. If you want to get somewhere, you cannot keep relying on the same Oakensol build for the entire PvP combat system. Related to these points, I also want to reference the video on screen right now, that explains more in depth how accessibility options are best implemented in games in general, from which I also took a little inspiration for this section.
What's for sure is that these builds are a good fit if you're a beginner player and you want an easy accessibility option that will last for your daily battlegrounds, or if you want to get into Cyrodiil to do some zerging or AP farming, say to get to the tier 3 alliance rewards. The builds can be adjusted like I did for different classes earlier, but they can also be significantly improved if you start looking at more difficult to get sets as well. I have received some feedback earlier about these builds too, where a newer player tried them and found them fun and effective. If you are also a newer player, or if you want to have an easier time just relaxing in PvP, I hope these builds can help you with this endeavor as well. Remember that everything concerning the build details is also on the website connected to this channel, esopvpbuilds.com. I also offer personal aid and coaching sessions through Patreon, and if you have general questions, there's a comment section in this video, and I also have a Discord server you can join. In any case, I thank you for watching, I hope it was interesting, and I'll see you next time. Bye!